Hello, everybody. Welcome to Community Forum. My name is Ron Vecchia. Uh, and this is our special edition of Me in the Manager, uh, but this week it's Me in the Assistant Manager. Joining me is uh, the Assistant Town Manager, Do Joe Domolovitz. Joe, welcome to Community Forum. You've been here many moons ago, but this is the first time um, with our new program, as we call it. It's kind of variation of Community Forum. And that's something that I started uh, after we took office uh, to kind of keep bringing people up to speed on what's going on. Kind of a recap of what we've done at the last town council meeting. And of course, uh, the last town council meeting was March 6th, which was Tuesday. And um, it, was, uh, it was quite a long meeting. We had a lot on the agenda. There was a lot of discussion. Um, we had presentations by the school department, by the, uh, the dog park folks, the folks that have been working on uh, finding a location in Winthrop for a dog park. And also the, uh, the folks uh, gave us an update on the current status of the ferry and, and where we're going with that situation. Um, but I think some of the things that are on the mind of folks is uh, really surrounding uh, the last couple of weeks, maybe the last month, month and a half, and that's the weather issue. Uh, we've had that storm in January, January 5th, which we had considerable flooding. We had flooding in areas that we never, you know, experienced it, maybe minor during the blizzard of 78. And everybody said, well, you know, it was, it was a fluke. But um, we had it again. And I guess it's becoming the new norm as, as far as uh, what the town has to prepare for. So on that note, I attended uh, a couple of meetings on, I think it was a Tuesday, Joe? Tuesday, Monday, both Tuesday, Tuesday yep. And um, one of them was uh, surrounding Coughlin Playground, and it was a site visit by the state. And Joe, why don't you kind of give us a background of what's, what's happening down there and, and what the timetable is on some type of uh, relief as far as, you know, supporting next to the, the, the park in, at Coughlin. Sure. Well, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we, we started to notice that the uh, west bank of Coughlin Playground was eroding into the uh, channel, um, and we were losing a you know, big piece of the park. I think we probably lost almost 20 feet of the park in the last uh, eight, 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and it, in some ways, it seems to be speeding up a little bit. Uh, we've <coughs> tried a couple of times looking for opportunities to try to stabilize that bank. Uh, we had, at one point, we had applied for some uh, money from the state to try to uh, extend the seawall uh, from Grandview down and, and engulf the rest of uh, the park, and that was turned down. Uh, you know, as you know, after, uh, after the dikes broke in, in uh, Louisiana, the uh, federal government said that they didn't want to see people armoring the coast if they didn't have to. Mm -hmm. So um, two years ago, a year and a half ago, two years ago, no, I guess it was two years ago, we asked for some money from the Coastal Zone Management folks to uh, study a what's known as a green infrastructure solution, which would be, you know, in some places it could be a dune, it could be a living shoreline, uh, to find some way to kind of help stabilize that bank and keep it from eroding into the ocean. Uh, CZM gave us money and the town worked with an engineering firm to develop a, uh, a green infrastructure solution that we believe will work. And uh, we're, we then went back to CZM and asked for more money to do the permitting and final engineering. Mm -hmm. So that's the stage we're in right now. Uh, the good news about a green solution is that it's a lot cheaper to build. If we were going to build a seawall down there, it would be upwards of a half million dollars or more. Um, now can, can we build a seawall? I, I thought well, under Wetlands Protection yeah, Act. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we can't now anyway. Right. Um, the ones that are there, you know, you can maintain them, but you can't. Right. Generally, it's very difficult to get a new one permitted. So uh, the, the living shoreline would be the best approach for us. And we mm -hmm. have a, a good design now. And we have grant money from the state to complete the design and do the permitting. So we're, when you were down at Coughlin, when we were down at Coughlin on, Mon on Tuesday, we were meeting with MEPA. So that's the start of the permitting process. Mm -hmm. uh, MEPA will review it. Um, determine and what is, what is MEPA and what's their function for the folks at home? That MEPA is the Massachusetts Environmental Protection Act. It, it actually, it's the office that applies the the, the Environmental Protection Act for the state okay. uh, and kind of gets the process going. Mm -hmm. They'll basically look at it and make sure that it's a project that can be done. And then we still have to go through the permitting of, of applying to DEP and Coastal Zone Management and the, Divine, the uh, Division of Marine Fisheries and all the others to make sure so that they all like sign off. So there's like a multitude of, of yeah. people that have to, you know, check off on this thing. Absolutely. And that's why it takes six months. And that's, that's if it goes 
smoothly. That's if it goes smoothly. I mean, generally we do, we've done pretty well recently. We, we followed the very similar process uh, when we started to permit the Belle Isle Marsh Walk. And, um, and that was in an even tougher place because uh, Belle Isle Marsh is an area of critical environmental concern in ACEC. And uh, so the, the threshold for getting permits is much higher. Mm -hmm. And our, our project there was a little bit more invasive, right? We were building um, hard structure, a, mar a, a boardwalk into the marsh. Mm -hmm. But um, the state was able to permit it. They, they saw the value in it. And what we're doing over at Coughlin Playground is nowhere near as, as intensive. It's nowhere near invasive. It, in fact, it, it will use uh, the types of solutions that would happen in nature. We're just going to help it along and help it happen a little faster. Mm -hmm. So we'd, uh, we'd, we've got to go through this next six-month process. Um, our engineers will apply to all the permitting agencies at the same time so that the clock uh, can run concurrently. Right. And um, hope generally, if, when you do that, as long as you don't have any major uh, opposition to the project, it can go through in, in six months or so. So Joe, I, you know, the project is not going to raise the level. It's going to just no. restore right. everything back to its original state. It won't, it won't restore it to its original uh, state. It will stop the degradation that's, that's been going on with the erosion. What will happen is the state, if they approve the project, and we're fairly, you know, comfortable that they will. Uh, I don't even think it's optimistic. I think that it's a good project. It's the type of project the state's looking for municipalities to take on. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, going through the process and making sure everybody looks at it. But if they approve the project from the date that they approve the project, wherever the bank is at, we will stabilize the bank from that point. So we can't reclaim. So it's not going to reclaim no. what we've lost over the last couple of years. No, we won't be able to. Um, the state won't do that. You know, and they can't increase the elevation given the fact that we've had these, you know, events. These, no, these, they, these again, they won't events. do it. They won't do that. They're they're looking to let Mother Nature kind of, uh, to some extent, do what it's going to do as long as it's not hurting people. Our our big argument is that the park is part of the protection uh, for the Point Shirley neighborhood, especially on that western side, mm -hmm. and that uh, if we let it keep eroding, then the water's going to be right at Bayview Avenue, and we want to avoid that. I think the state agrees with that. Right. Um, so we'll, we'll just keep pushing. We'll get the, we'll get the uh, engineering finalized. We'll get the permits in place. And, um, and those have to happen concurrently as well, because you don't want to engineer the thing to 100% and then have the state say, well, we want you to change this. That just adds cost to the engineering. Mm -hmm. So generally, when you get to this phase, you have a project that's feasible, that's viable, then you go through and you, you permit it at the same time you're, f you're finishing engineering. Interesting. So the best guess on the, actually starting the project is? Um, you know, if we get the MEPA sign off here in the next month or two, um, the engineers will go forward and it'll apply for all the other permits. Six months from there, we'll, we'll get our answer. Then we, have to, uh, then we have to get some money to build it. Um, I think that we're already working on that. We'll, you know, CZM. That was the other thing I was going to ask you. Is that something that's coming out of the height of, of uh, Winthrop? Um, to be determined. To, mm -hmm. to be honest, to be determined. I think that uh, we will look to CZM again. You know, we've been very proactive in our approach with, uh, with the state permitting agencies and who also have the ability to, to, to give us grants. We've mm -hmm. had four or five grants in the last three or four years since I've been here. And uh, all very good projects. Um, CZM understands what we're trying to do. We're trying to protect the coast and also protect our residents at the same time in ways that will protect both mm -hmm. and uh, so they've been very they've been very willing to work with us and they've been very generous as far as uh, approving our projects and giving us grant money so um, I, I don't know what the final total of the cost would be I know yeah. it's a lot less than it would be if we were building a wall right. and it's uh, something that would be a lot more sustainable it would need some regular maintenance but it's not something mm -hmm. that would um, you know it's not something that would run a large bill for us every year um, so we're, we're hoping that we'll get the money from the state to build that living shoreline. So when you say to maintain like maintenance on it, is that something that the town would be able to do? We'd be able to bring in a, a front end loader maybe and move stuff around? Or? Yeah, I, you, it's, it's moving around some rocks and, and things to keep them in place to make sure that the, yeah. uh, the substrate, the stuff that gets put down to grow the, the marsh grasses and, yeah. and retain the sand and let everything build up on its own. Right. Uh, it's, it's, we just need to make sure that stuff stays in place. So, yeah. So we have other projects. I mean, we have other areas around town. We have um, Point Shirley. We put that berm. It takes about two months to put that berm to protect the homes there. Yep. And, you know, it's already gone. And if, even if we wanted to, to, to stop rebuilding, it's going to take two months. And by the 
you know, the, the it's an intensive the pro it's an intensive process. Um, you know, it, and it takes both of our, our front end loaders at the same time. Generally, uh, DPW under the direction of uh, Steve Calla gets that project started in September after the beach season's over. Everybody's right. done going to the beach. Um, and like, like I said, it takes about two months with the uh, crews down there. You need to have somebody down there to watch out for the birds because the, you know, that's one of the things that in order to do that project, we have to get a permit from the state every year. The state wants us to make sure that we're not harming the wildlife, right? So that we have to have a bird spotter down there making sure that the trucks don't run over any bird mm -hmm. nests or anything. And, um, and like I said, both front end loaders. Right now, we're in recovery mode. We're using our front end loaders to, you know, clean up from the storms. Right. So we're, there's no way we could possibly dedicate those to go back right. down to the beach again for two whole months. Mm -hmm. And then by the time we did, we'd get it, we'd get the berm built up again, and then it'd be beach season. And then everybody down there would want us to take the berms down so that they could see the beach and enjoy the <laughs> enjoy the summertime. So. Um, we kind of have to live with it right now. Yeah. But this is something that happens every year. This year certainly was a lot more uh, intensive and a lot more noticeable. Mm -hmm. But uh, Steve builds, Steve and his crew build those wall, those those berms down there every year for the last few years. And the first really good st storm always pretty much takes it out. Yeah. But it acts as enough of a buffer for the rest of the season yeah. that uh, you know, we get, we, it, we've been impacted, but not as much as, mm -hmm. um, as in the past. And, uh, you know, we'll just have to be a little bit quicker on the response now that the berm is down. Right. And we have the other areas that are always impacted in huge storms, which is Pico Beach. And this this year, uh, several times, you know, an, an interesting uh, elevation of problems down in the Morton Street area. Yeah. And um, I know uh, myself and, and uh, the fire chief were down there talking to the residents of that area, you know, after the, the, the problems. And... Um, it, it just seems it was that first storm in January 5th, it was just like <clears throat> something out of science fiction, the way the water was just coming over the marsh and the wind, everything was just aligned perfectly. Yeah. What, what can we do? I, I know, you know we both attended a meeting of the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness. Yes. If you say that three times quick, you're probably going to follow we'll, it up. But we'll call it MVP from the rest we'll, of this meeting. We'll call it so. MVP. And it's interesting because uh, the meeting was, was well uh, attended by a lot of department heads and even other organizations within the community. Right. And why don't you kind of give the folks an overview of exactly what the goal is of this, this organization? So uh, MVP is a project, a program that was developed by the Baker administration and uh, environmental, en Energy and Environmental Affairs Department to uh, help municipalities study where they're vulnerable to um, primarily to sea level rise and climate change, but to any natural hazards. So, you know, western part of the state isn't going to be really vulnerable at this point to sea level rise, but they have other uh, natural hazards that, that they're prone to, wildfires and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the state developed a program by which they would train, um, you know, environmental engineers and such to, to do this workshop in communities. And the goal is to have all the communities kind of developing the same type of plan. You have, you're meeting all the same kind of criteria in your plan so that the plans can all be uh, assessed as being adequate for assessing our needs, uh, assessing where we're vulnerable, wh what we do well as well. We're not so just areas looking critically. As far as physical areas of the town. Physical areas of the town. And then are, how departments respond in, in certain respects during an emergency. It, and how, it, both in how we respond to emergencies, how we respond to those natural disasters, but then also in determining if there are places that we can start to be more resilient to them or, or even help fend them off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, what the state doesn't like is a whole bunch of towns coming and saying, oh, we need a seawall, we need a, a green infrastructure solution, we need to, they, they need some help in determining, you know, what's the priority list? How many people does this affect? How much is mm -hmm. it going to cost? Uh, what are the losses every year? You know, um, in some ways the state's kind of doing what the FEMA has been doing for years with their hazard mitigation program. Mm -hmm. So the town of Winter does have a uh, an current hazard mitigation plan. The town of Winter did invest in a, uh, an assessment, a, a critical infrastructure vulnerability assessment last year. And uh, we were just finishing up that, uh, that assessment to around the time that the MVP plan came, uh, be, began being offered by the state. Mm -hmm. So we immediately applied and we were approved. Uh, so the MVP program will build on the hazard mitigation plan that we have with the federal government and the critical infrastructure vulnerability assessment we did ourselves last year. 
but this one is designed to reach out more into the community and get more citizens involved. Um, unfortunately, just because of the, the time it takes to develop the, the hazard mitigation plan or that assessment, the engineers typically wind up working a lot with just the, the departmental staff, mm -hmm. um, consultants that might be working in the town, and state partners that might be familiar with us. So when we did the critical infrastructure vulnerability assessment, we did it. We had folks from uh, MWRA and Massport that contributed to that report. Right. Um, this will will look also to talk to residents, talk to people who've been impacted, talk what they see, how it's changed over the years. And again, for us here in a coastal town in Massachusetts, we're really looking to cat, you know, categorize what all of our vulnerabilities are, but in, in particular, raise up the priority of those things that are being brought on by um, sea level rise and, and mm -hmm. climate change. So and, getting a little more specific uh, as far as community involvement. So we're looking for people that, that are in areas that are impacted, let's say, as a, for instance, Pico Beach or Morton Street or Point yep. Shirley, uh, certain parts of the Highlands and so forth. We're looking for those neighborhoods, uh, people that are interested in those <coughs> neighborhood becoming part of the workshop. Sure, uh, ab absolutely. We're, uh, we're gonna be using, obviously, dozens, hundred, you know, close to 100 homes were impacted by the storms on January 5th and then this past weekend. Um, we've got, contact information for most of those people. We've got their phone numbers, their email addresses, their addresses, obviously we responded to many of them. And uh, we'll be sending out um, invitations to those folks. The CRB is a little bit limited in capacity. I can't have 300 people, 200 people in the room because it'll be just difficult to get the work accomplished. So maybe they'll get like a spokesperson yeah. for the neighborhood. So what we're hoping is that we'll send out invitations to all of them, ask mm -hmm. them to, um, to to work, get a couple people from their neighborhood to uh, represent the neighborhood and their concerns and, and, yep. and be at them. Now the workshop is very intensive. It's an eight hour workshop. It's gonna take place on a Friday from about eight o'clock in the morning till about four, four thirty in the afternoon. Was it April 5th? A uh, Friday, April 6th, I believe. April 6th. And uh, we're, we're firming up the location. So I don't want to say right now, I'm, mm -hmm. pr I'm pretty confident I know where it's going to be, but okay. it'll be in the invitation when it gets mailed home. Okay. Uh, we have a core group uh, that's working on the project that is about uh, 18 to 20 people. That is, again, departmental staff, but it's also local folks who, um, are involved in these kinds of things already. The, the local group mothers out front, the Friends of Belle Isle Marsh, there is a woman in town, a new resident in town, uh, lovely person, she works at the Nature Conservancy. This is what she does all day, right, is kind of planning for the protection of nature. So mm -hmm. uh, she's gonna be involved, she's part of our, our core team, and obviously we have consultants that uh, were hired through the MVP right. grant. So, right. um, you know, we've got a good group of 20 already. We hope that we'll get a turnout of around 50 or 60 people it goes a little bit more, I have to make sure I know what the capacity of, of the room is where we're having the workshop. Mm -hmm. But if it goes a little more, all the better. We, we right. want to make sure we have good participation. We get all the information we can. Right. Joe, this program, if, if it's successful, once every, all the, the uh, <coughs> workshop is complete and so forth, what does that do for the town of Winthrop? So it does a couple things. It helps us prioritize the list of the projects that may be possible to help us be more resilient. So, um, and, by, and by resiliency, I mean both being able to um, withstand you know nature when it when it, when it wants to to try and beat us up but also you know to climb back out of it when we're done mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we're going to be able to stop the water and sometimes we won't the question is can we do things that'll make it easier to recover when the water recedes um, just just one of the things just off the top of my head when I think about Pico uh, when you when you go down there during an event you can see that there's a there's a wall that goes to a certain point yep. to the street and then it's wooden slats I mean, to me, a project, a, a simple project of, you know, extending that seawall down to the first house yep. it would re relieve that situation tremendously. And so you, what you hope is that out of the CRB, we get the report that says that that's a good, viable project. It's right. not, it's, uh, it's kind of low-hanging fruit. It's something that really shouldn't take a great deal of money. It right. requires some permitting. It requires mm -hmm. some, uh, some effort. But it's something that hopefully the, the CRB will agree with us that that's a, a common sense solution there. Right. And, um, and then we just have to you know, go about doing that work. Yeah. Um, other areas may have a little bit more complicated solution. And right. we'll, we'll, we'll want to identify those as well. Right. But the work we did last year on the critical infrastructure assessment also gave us a list of projects that we can do to try and make our, our public infrastructure more resilient. We have a couple pumping stations right in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. We have roads that we need to make sure are able to recover 
Um, and you know we've got some projects out of that list too. Right. But importantly too, in addition to giving us that list and helping us plan for how to recover from these things, um, it will it kind of give us an even footing with the state as far as uh, the, it, there's nothing in place yet, but the governor's, uh, the Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs has hinted that they, they may be trying to establish some funds specifically for MVP projects. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, by having our plan and having our list of projects, we'd be one of the few communities, I think only 70 communities currently are involved in the MVP process out of mm -hmm. the 300 and 56. So, uh, you know, we'd be kind of right in that group that would, we would be able to apply for any new funds, much like the, the way the Green Communities Act worked. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to apply for and become a green community, and then you could get access to those funds. We finished this MVP process. We'll be one of those MVP communities. Mm -hmm. And then when, when or if the state makes funds available for those projects, we'd be the first ones to take advantage of it. The, the state also very frequently, when you go through those kind of intensive planning processes, will give you extra points on other grants that already exist. Mm -hmm. So there are MassWorks grants and other, uh, you know, seawall and, and dam repair grants and other things that the state already has available to it mm -hmm. that if we could, you know, when we're filling out our application, there may they may, they may start to add on to that application, are you an MVP community? Right. And if you are and you can check that box, that gets you a couple extra points, moves you up the ladder a little bit as far as uh, getting your project approved. Okay. So. Good, good. Real quickly, we didn't discuss this beforehand, we kind of went over an agenda, but Complete Streets, uh, that was a, that's a project that's uh, pretty high on the agenda. They, <coughs> we, uh, thanks to the weather, we kind of uh, lost out on an opportunity to kind of have like some type of yeah, a ceremony. Yeah, we, were, we, we should be right now down in French Square, um, you know, shaking hands with Lieutenant Governor Polito and, and right. watching as she announces all of this year's Tier 3 winners. Um, yeah, we, the town became, uh, I think we've done pretty well. In less than a year, uh, we've become a complete streets community, had our uh, assessment done, developed our Tier 3 plan for projects, and applied for money, and now we have received money mm -hmm. uh, to the tune of about $260,000 that will be able to be used to make, uh, you know, French Square, be a, uh, the streets around French Square become a more complete street area, mm -hmm. um, which I think is, you know, important for that, uh, regardless of whatever uh, ever other work the, the council decides to approve of, right. we can do things down there to, you know, improve mm -hmm. Uh, mobility for people in the center right, right. and um, make it a more attractive place for people to come to. Right. So, so we also have uh, Revere Street. Uh, we have uh, filed a project notification request with uh, MassDOT to do yep. some work on Revere Street. And uh, oh no, that's the tip project. There's two different projects. Okay, both sort of touch. Uh, the tip project Tips. is in is is uh, is being review, reviewed by the state. I actually believe they, um, the staff, the uh, Central Transit, CTPS, Central Transportation Planning Staff. Got all these, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> acronyms that floating around. Uh, CTPS staff made recommendations on which projects should move forward in uh, in the current TIP plan. Mm -hmm. So the, the TIP pro uh, project uh, is state run with federal money that plans out transportation projects statewide on a five year basis, five year rolling basis. So as they complete the projects in one year, they plan the next year. Mm -hmm. they're, right now, they're doing the plan for. FY19 to FY23, we're in the discussion to have a project that would be programmed into FY23. Uh, that would be a complete reconstruction of Revere Street from the intersection of uh, McGee's, Corner. McGee's Corner all the way to Crest Ave. Crest Ave. And it would include complete reconstructions of both of those uh, signalized intersections mm -hmm. um, that are, are at either end of that project. So it's a big project. It would uh, run about $3 million to complete at our current estimates, mm -hmm. um, but the state would do the project and the state would pay the bill for the $3 million. The trick for us is that we have to do the engineering. Right. And um, To the tune of? Overall, I think it's about $330,000 mm -hmm. uh, to get started. Phase one would be about $140,000. Okay. So I believe the town manager has got a request coming to the council for that one hundred and forty dollars right. to get us started. That would give us um, a couple things. It would give us 25% of the plans, which is where um, CTPS and uh, the Massachusetts Planning Organization want to see us at right. to, to understand that we're serious about the project mm -hmm. and, uh, and that would give us an opportunity to move up a little bit uh, and make sure that we're on that, that FY23. The other good thing about our project, just so people understand, the TIP program usually does multi-multi-million dollar projects statewide. They do highways, they do overpasses, and, 
and the projects that can run 10, 15, 20 million dollars for one project. Mm -hmm. What they like about our project right now, and I, again, I have to go back and check and find out if we were approved to go forward or if we're still in the negotiation mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. But uh, what they like about our project, it's only $3 million. So every year when they program these projects, they have a bunch of the big ticket items, right? Invariably, a couple of them before they get to their year yeah, will fall off. Fall Something up. will happen, it'll fall off. And then the state's looking for other projects to fill in. Yeah. So. Uh, what, what has happened in other places and would be a potential for us if we can get onto the tip mm -hmm. is that we might be programmed for FY23, but if a program for, if, if a project for FY20 falls off mm -hmm. and we're at 75% design, they'll say, hey, can you move up and be ready to go in FY20? And we can say, yeah, we are because we're only $3 million project. We can get it done. And we might move up and get done earlier. Right. Um, that's not a guarantee. It's just, a, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an optimist at heart. So I always say, you know, <laughs> let's, let's try and get our, ourselves ready to be uh, prepared for when good stuff happens, right? So uh, a couple of other things. We've got about a little under three minutes, uh, a little over three minutes, I should say. There was two other items on the menu. On the menu, on the I said that's the second time I've said that. The menu. I said Are it you one night. No, Are you hungry? I mean, I said I it didn't one have night. Lunch before we came. I said it at the council. Oh, this yeah. is the next item on the menu. But anyway, but the next item on the agenda, well, one of the other items on the agenda was uh, the dog park location. Um, uh, DCR uh, turned down the location that, right. that the town requested, which was over by uh, the Belle Isle Marsh. <laughs> And uh, so there's several others out there. What's that whole process now? I know that's gone to, I've sent that to the Public Works Committee. You did. Um, thank, you for, thank you for that. They'll um, review it. Yeah, I think that uh, the Public Works Committee was a great place to send it to because we've got to do a little bit more work. I think we had uh, eight or ten locations that we scouted before uh, the, the previous council's Public Works Committee made the recommendation on the, the park and DCR mm -hmm. that DCR said no to. Uh, there were several other viable locations in that, in that uh, list. We need to review them. We also have started to think a little bit differently. You know, one of the big problems with citing a dog park has been people's resistance to the fact that it was going to bring a lot of traffic to their neighborhood or a lot of noise and things that they don't want. And, and trying to be sensitive to that concern, uh, one of the ideas that came up that we'll discuss with the council um, and the subcommittee is, is it possible for around the same amount of investment to do two smaller parks mm -hmm. and distribute the, uh, distribute the um, potential uh, for noise or traffic and, right. and make it a little easier for people. Plus, we're a small town, it's only a mile and a half square, but mm -hmm. it, it can be a little bit difficult to get around from one place to another, right? So if we have one park on one side of town and one park on the other side of town, it makes it a little easier. People can, can walk their dog in a park a little closer to their home. Right. All right, we're just going to wrap it up. It's just under two minutes, and uh, there were several other things I wanted to discuss. But just to recap, this Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program workshop, to me, is, is very, very important, given what's happened in the last uh, two months, month and a half, weather-wise in town. And, and I urge folks that are interested in this, uh, it, look, it's going to be April 6th. It's an, it's an eight-hour event, right. an eight-hour workshop. And... The state mandated the eight hours because there's, it's a complete education in how we move forward in, in the process of trying to, you know, prioritize different locations in the town and, and so forth. So uh, look, look out for more information on the workshop April 6th. To me, that's probably one of the most important things that, that we have on the agenda right now. And there'll be more information. I'm sure we'll have a news release out shortly on it. Yeah. We're, like I said, we want to finalize the location. We want to be sure of the location. We'll be sending out a, a short release that the meeting's happening. We'll be sending targeted invitations, particularly starting with those neighborhoods. Yeah. And then uh, we want to make sure we get to 60 people. So once we have identified who from those neighborhoods wants to participate, we'll try to fill in the gap by extending the invitation out beyond that as well. Great. Great. Joe, thanks for joining me. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. This is Ron Becky. You've been watching Community Forum, uh, me and the assistant manager. I'll be back in uh, two weeks with a new show.